And Durrett. Durrett, number 33, the dynamic forward who defined a proud era. Durrett, who took his position to a new level, as complete a player as his generation produced. Durrett, whose knee betrayed him, destroying a pro career that never really began. Durrett, 42 years old, after years of bitterness, is now ready to look back. And what a vision he will see. I feel well. I'm doing good, and you know I've had some experiences. I'm just, I'm happy, and I'm happy to be able to um, be here to, to talk about this 20 years later. The Durrett saga actually begins 25 years ago at Shenley High School in the Pittsburgh neighborhood of Shady Side. Growing up on the hill, Durrett had vowed with his friends to bring a state title to Pittsburgh. The magic moment still on display when Durrett led Shenley over Chester High School at the Pittsburgh Civic Arena for the 1966 state championship. At age 18, he was the toast of the Iron City. Ken Durrett, the silky smooth forward, number 54, had led Shenley High School to the state basketball championship in 1966. Now it came time for a major decision in his life, where to attend college, the next stage of his career. Ken knew at the time it would take him out of Pittsburgh. He was truly a national recruit, visiting USC, New Mexico, Calvin Murphy and Niagara, and his early favorite, Villanova. And then the South called, like a guy, Larry Cannon to play, Bernard Williams. I had met them. They came to Pittsburgh to play in the Dapper Dan, the first Dapper Dan in 1965. I had met them and we had talked and, you know, when they called me and said, hey, look, LaSalle's gonna have a great team. We need you. And I looked at them and I said, hey, when, we're so when I'm a sophomore and they're a senior, we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a dynamite team. If I can, you know, so I decided to go, especially after Villanova kind of gave me the squash after they got geezer. They got hired Porter, so they figured they didn't need me. So I says, okay. I, that's the first thing I asked LaSalle was Jim Harding at the time. I says, y'all play Villanova? He says, yeah. I said, I'll sign. <laughs> Durrett had a prolific freshman year, and in late 68, as a sophomore, he was ready to join a senior-studded lineup for a run toward the top of the polls. But it was a time of transition at LaSalle. An NCAA investigation was on. Coach Jim Harding left to be replaced by the legendary Tom Gola. LaSalle knew that they were going to get hit with something, and we hadn't played our first game yet when the sentence was handed down. That was two years probation. So the fellows who were on that team, there was no way that they were going to go to the NCAA. And uh, it was a tough, you know, thing to, uh, to get hit with, but... Uh, we had to live with it. So there would be no national tournament. The regular season took on added significance. LaSalle built a nearly perfect record, leading toward the only title it could win in the Big Five. The obstacle, Howard Porter and the Villanova Wildcats. We used to have these flaps on our warm-ups, and we were all out trying to get really for the dunking in the warm-up and doing our thing, right? And I come down, I, I roar it through, and I swing the ball up to throw this dunk down backwards and my flap jumps up between the basket and the rim, and I throw it and it throws me straight to the floor. I was so hurt. <laughs> I got everybody's asking me, I was hurt and so bad, I said, leave me alone. <laughs> I was so embarrassed and I was hurt. Well, stand by, America. In control, LaSalle. Lodacci. The game was not artistic, the proverbial typical Big Five game. LaSalle senior class, featuring future pros Larry Cannon, Roland Fatty Taylor, and Bernie Williams did not have to remind Kenny of the significance of this one. He would be matched with the other super soft, Howard Porter, in what became a classic confrontation. Well, Howard Porter and Kenny Durrett one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what happened. Durrett. 61, 55, 15 for Kenny Durrett. The great basketball player is Ken Durrett. He's going to get even better. He plays with both hands. He can shoot with either hand. They work to Porter from the line. It was a, a play at the end of the, almost at the end of the game where I got a ball on the baseline. And Johnny Jones fouled me. Johnny, yeah, he fouled me. And they swear I dunked the ball, you know, it was one of them kind of things. It was just that close. I had to, I had to kind of turn it down, but it really wasn't a thundering dunk because we couldn't dunk. But it was the kind of thing when he grabbed my arm, my arm came down. So it had to go. So George Ravelin and all the, everybody, is, every time I see George now, he tells me, you still dunk that ball. <laughs> LaSalle played flawlessly in the closing minutes, claiming the only championship within their grasp. 
23 wins, just one loss. Ranked second in the national polls, a bittersweet season that ended several nights later at Westchester. Those guys really, you know, wanted to prove something. And I think they did with the record that they had. And uh, I think that we could have beaten UCLA in the finals if we had played them. Durrett's junior year was not as successful, though he teamed with senior guard, now Penn head coach Fran Dunphy, to forge a winning record. We played in two tournaments. One was at the University of Tennessee, the other was a Quaker City tournament. He was MVP in neither, probably should have been MVP in both. Uh, ironically enough, I was the MVP in the Quaker City, and I, and I had a nice tournament, played well, but I didn't deserve to be the MVP. I thought that was all. Uh, we won the tournament because of him, not because of me. In his senior season, Durrett climbed to new heights, averaging over 27 points a game, put a 45-foot hurting on Jim McDaniels and a powerful Western Kentucky squad. He won his third straight Big Five MVP award. He was truly everyone's All-American. But unbeknownst to anyone, a single flawed step late in that season would change his life. It came against Canisius in what would be a 40-point victory. We had a guy on our team named George Gareda. And only time George got in the game when he was coming in for me. And I think I must have had 20 points in the first quarter, first half or something. So I seen George going to the scorer's table. So I snatched his last rebound and I decided to take off with it. I took off. So going down, Jimmy Crawford was cutting. And I was going to pass it to him, but a guy cut in, so I decided to keep it. And when I decided to keep it, a guy cut off in front of me. I tried to go behind him. And, I, and I, all I remember from that point is pain. You know, I, I just remember pain. And I always say, maybe I should have passed that ball. <laughs> Durrett would eventually return and play that evening on one leg. He would limp through the rest of his college career, unaware that he had suffered a torn anterior cruciate ligament. An injury that today still requires lengthy rehabilitation, but 20 years ago was nearly undetectable. He was declared medically fit and ready to turn professional. These were the days of the bidding wars between the NBA and the old ABA. I was elected city controller in 70, so I had to resign uh, my position at LaSalle. And when I left, I had said to Kenny in his senior year, I said, don't sign anything with anybody. I says, call me first. All right, because there were so-called agents out there who were signing these kids up to agent contracts. And Kenny called me 11 o'clock at night and uh, told me there was a guy, a friend of his from Pittsburgh, and a lawyer who had a contract for him to sign with the Pittsburgh uh, team. <laughs> and I shot over there, and we, we put that to, to rest, and we chased the guy, and, and Kenny finished playing his senior year. But if you remember Howard Porter at Villanova, he signed with an agent, and that's what they were doing in those days. And, you know, you, you can't blame the kids because they were giving them upfront money, and these were kids who never had anything in their life. But Kenny fortunately called me, and we chased the guy, and uh, he went on, and uh, I helped him negotiate his contract. And uh, he, uh, you know, except for the injury, probably would have had a great career. Durrett was selected fourth overall in the 71 draft by the Kansas City Kings. He slipped in preseason, further aggravating the injured leg, eventually facing surgery, which did little to relieve his suffering and nothing to cure his problem. Kenny would play parts of three seasons with the Kings before eventually ending his career as a Philadelphia 76er. For a while, I was a little bitter. You know, I was a little bitter because, you know, I, I worked hard to get where I had to be, you know, and, um, and it, it took me a while to get back. And then I realized, I said, I'm not bitter at the game. I'm just bitter at some of the things that go around the game. It's not about that. It's about, you know, and I, you know, because I wouldn't go to a basketball game for a while. I didn't even want to watch a basketball game, you know, because it was that kind of thing. But then you get back into it and, you know, you start, you know, that's my first love. You know, basketball did a lot for me more than anything. Probably has put me in places I would have never been if it doesn't, don't, don't be for the uh, chance of play, playing basketball. <laughs> And once he could not play basketball, Ken returned to LaSalle, served as an assistant coach, and earned his degree. He's owned businesses, done some high school coaching, and is raising his family. And now, with the blessing of time, there is remarkable clarity to these cherished memories. Ken Durrett, thoroughbred, is at peace with his legacy. You know, I would love to go on and been what I felt that I wanted to do. And as I had some goals that I wanted to 
to prove in professionally. And I, you know, and I thought that I had worked to be as good as anybody that ever played. You know, it didn't happen that way, but you know, um, I'm happy with myself, and I got a chance to be able to do some things. There's a lot of guys that didn't get a chance to go as far as I did, and you know, and I got to be happy. I, you know, life goes on, regardless of can he the best player of basketball. Or not, life goes on, so you know, I just got to be happy and, and enjoy. It. Now, I'm happy because I get a chance to do things like this. You know, you know, you get a chance to do things. You meet people and. People remember some things you did, and you know, I'm just glad that I'm going to be a part of some of the history that goes on in the Philadelphia area. If you think you play like this, but you really play like this,